You want the moon? I'll throw a lasso around it and bring it right down to you. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for It's a Wonderful Life. This was suggested to me by my Patreon supporters. If you guys would like a hand in choosing what I review in the future, maybe check out the Patreon. There is a link for it in the description below. Released back in 1946, starring Jimmy Stewart and directed by Frank Capra, follows the story of George Bailey, who continues to do the right thing, even at the detriment of his own endeavors, of his own adventures. Despite constantly being hit down, he keeps getting back up again to try and do the better thing until he reaches a point where he doesn't think he can go any longer and a angel by the name of Clarence comes to meet him at his darkest hour and tries to prove to him that his life does in fact have worth. I remember watching this movie for the first time in English class in high school and just being completely enamored with it. I love the characters of this film. I love the story. I love Jimmy Stewart, but that's really not hard to say. I enjoy the struggles and the hardships, but also the resilience of his character and all of these things that he goes through. From my opinion, I believe it is sort of a tale about the American dream and the hardships and the somewhat falsehoods that it has, but also the idea that the everyday man can come together to help one another against the idea of mass business, mass wealth, mass control. It kind of even rings even truer now when you look at Mr. Potter's mentality, his mindset, his business set, his lack of humanity, if you would. And then you look at the economy and how the entire business structure of North America is now. It's not very far off. Off. I love George Bailey's story. I love how he and Mary get together even though it starts off a little bit in a kind of an awkward situation with him just being pissed off that he can't go. His brother is going to work in Buffalo which means he's stuck in Bedford Falls and then he realizes the very great thing that he has in front of him is this woman who loves him and has loved him for so many years. Or there's the fact that he helps the town out during the depression by giving away all of his wedding gift money. And eventually it is given back to him tenfold on Christmas Day when he needs it most when the uh, building and loan is about to go out of business and him about being about to be arrested for tax evasion essentially. I got to show my wife this film. She hasn't seen it before really in full and there were so many moments I was like oh oh here it is oh oh here's another good part oh oh here it comes. My favorite bits obviously being throwing a lasso around the moon, the first time that Mary and George kiss, the moment where he thinks about killing himself and then Clarence just appears and then Clarence jumps into the water into the water himself. In terms of inspirations for this story, there is of course the written novel, but I really do feel there is a lot of cross comparisons, if not kind of a quasi reversal of the whole Christmas Carol theme. The idea that he gets to see a world where he never existed is sort of like a kind of a vision from one of the three ghosts. He gets rejuvenated, reinvigorated with the idea of life, the wealth of life. Is there a few things that have aged a little bit? The movie was made back in 1946, so obviously there's gonna be a little bit of lines that might offend some people. Again, it's a time piece. It is a piece of time. You can't go back to the 40s and just change shit like that. But that's what makes it a classic is you get to see how things were and we see how we've improved since then. There's the bit where Mary loses her bathrobe and she's hiding in the hydrangeas and George is just walking around in a circle going, oh, I wonder what I could do with this. I could sell tickets. All the while you're kind of thinking, hey George, uh, that's uh, not cool, bro. But again, it's kind of the jokes of the time that this was what they could do. For instance, the kiss that they do, uh, my wife thought it was a little bit strange. Back then, they could only do so much. I think there was a rule that you couldn't lock lips for more than like three or four seconds because otherwise it would be viewed as uh, unshowable. But either way, It's a Wonderful Life is a classic, not just because it's a Christmas classic either, which I have to say, that really only comes in in about the last 40 minutes the movie it ends on a Christmas day but the movie itself isn't really a Christmas film but it does hold on to those ideologies of what Christmas is in the sense of helping your fellow man being kind and generous to one another and it holds on to that 
right up until the end of the film, which is then ends in Christmas, ergo making it a Christmas classic. And if anyone has objections to that, that's why Die Hard is a Christmas classic. Fight me on it! But in the end, if you have somehow never seen It's a Wonderful Life, go see it. Just watch it. Most likely your movie theater is probably playing it right now. It's a film that it continues to warm my heart. It continues to bring joy to me in a way that I didn't think a film of this age would be possible. But it still does because it's it's a classic. So in the end, I'm gonna give It's a Wonderful Life a 7 out of 7. If you want to definitely see a classic from the 40s, a must-see from the 40s, I would definitely highly suggest it. Not only is it fun to re-watch this film and re-engage with these characters, watch the story unfold, but it's also kind of interesting to see how the filming techniques would happen. There are some bits that you will see where the editing is quite harsh. It's a bit of a, an abrupt change, and that is again kind of the limitations of the time, but particularly the the part that still mystifies me is when Clarence disappears when he's being uh, attacked by the cop. I don't know how they did it so seamlessly, considering there's so much movement. Either they just got it right and they just got the lucky cut, but it just looks like such a flawless him disappearing. It, it's so good. But in the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And as I said earlier, if you guys would like a hand in what I review in the future, please consider joining my Patreon page. I'm going to be making a few updates to it actually coming into the new year, so Patreon supporters, make sure to keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, there's a link for that in the description below. But until then, wishing you all a Merry Christmas, hoping you guys had as good of a 2021 as you possibly could have, despite all of the adversity and the challenges that we went through this year. And here's hoping that you all have a happy new year, and let's go and kick 2022 in the butt. Anyways, guys. I'll see you next time. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right.